fact, we think it started in a pub, probably, uh, about 300 years ago. Nobody knows exactly why, but I think it was an opportunity for the lay clerks of the three cathedrals of Hereford, Worcester and Gloucester to get together and spend some time together, have some drinks and do some singing. And from that, I think it became formalised in the early years of the 18th century and, and started rotating between the three cathedrals. The organisation of the three choirs initially was through the cathedrals themselves when the choirs got together and the gentlemen would sing. Um, over time, it was realised that the organisation of the festival was getting more complicated and the festival stewards, people from the aristocracy and, and uh, generally to begin with, began supporting the festival both financially and organising it as well. Um, it was in about 1720 when Bishop Biss preached a sermon about the need to support uh, the widows and orphans of clergy because of course at that time when a clergyman died his wife and children would be forced out of the house literally straight away and, and would be destitute in many cases and so that's where the charitable beginnings of the festival came from copying somewhat the St Paul's Cathedral uh, charity to support widows and orphans of clergy. Uh, in the course of the 19th century a chorus started being attached to it so that larger scale choral work started being performed. And then of course uh, the, the glory days of Elgar and Vaughan Williams, we had a huge chorus by then. I mean there are some amazing photographs of the chorus from the turn of the century with the ladies all wearing their hats. Way up, uh, you know, a, a huge great stage that goes way up into the ceiling practically. I'm sure health and safety wouldn't, wouldn't permit it today. Um, I can't remember where I found this, but it's a handbill which was obviously given out to members of the chorus for the Hereford Festival in 1924. And there's a few things about this which we would find utterly uh, extraordinary and incomprehensible and just impossible now. First of all, the festival used to take place in September, the first week of September, and it actually did until um, the late 1960s. So you think everybody's been on holiday for all this time, they come back and suddenly they have one day of rehearsal. And let me just tell you how that went. This was Thursday, August the 28th, 1924, 2.30 p.m. till 5 p.m. They rehearsed the national anthem arranged by Elgar, an anthem by Battersill called Oh Lord Look Down. That wouldn't have taken very long, to be fair. Then the Mass in B minor. Then the Dream of Grontius. Then the Kingdom. Then a little Elgar song called Go Song of Mine. Then um, what I think was a new piece by Edgar Bainton called The Tower. And then finally a little bit of light relief just before tea at five o'clock, Brahms' Requiem. Then they have half an hour off for tea and come back and do The Hymn of Jesus by Holst, which is not easy by any means and would have been quite new then. Then another go at the Mass in B minor. Then it just says Parsifal. <laughs> Then after Parsifal, they would have done Elijah, and they finished off with Messiah. And judging by the train connections that are given here, I think that rehearsal would have been about two hours max. So that's four and a half hours rehearsal on all this stuff in 1924. Things hadn't changed very much by 1933 either. I've, I've got all the old programmes, they're sort of passed down to me. It's an amazing thing to have. Because here I have Sir Percy Hull's notes on the 33 festival, which is the year before Elgar died, of course. And they had a performance of The Kingdom. And he's written above it here, Elgar's last performance as a conductor. Now, The Kingdom's, you know, quite a lot to, to handle in a day on its own. But that was the morning performance at 11.30. In the afternoon, they came back and at precisely 2.30pm, as Dr Hull says, they did Beethoven 9, and then they had a break for Evensong at 5 o'clock, and then a third concert in the evening, which was a new work by Jordan Dyson, St Paul's Voyage to Melita, and then to Ramadulov, Brahms' Requiem. I mean, it's just an incomprehensibly, monstrously large amount of music to get through uh, on so little rehearsal time.
the thing is, I, I wear two different hats because I'm the artistic director of it. So for my sins, I'm, I'm responsible for, for the content of it. And obviously the Panny Fan started really not that long after the last Hereford Festival. I remember a meeting with, with people from the Philharmonia in autumn 2012 to talk about repertoire for this. And then we have to put that all together. We announced the whole programme a whole year before the festival at the previous year's festival. But now we're actually in the run-up to it and preparing it. So here I am today, halfway through our second rehearsal day with the three cathedral choirs. We just spent two hours with the choristers looking at music for Evensong, which includes a world premiere of the work by Bob Chilcott that's been written for us. Then next Saturday we have the first of our Saturday mass rehearsals for the chorus. And so the, the pace starts hotting up from now. Here we are about um, five weeks before the festival starts. I think it is the local interest in the festival that's kept it going, the fact that local people have been happy to support the festival, but then drawing in people from elsewhere as well, from across the country and across the world, and being able as well to draw in composers to produce works for the festival. Just over a hundred years ago, Sibelius was writing music for Gloucester, and other eminent composers as well have written for the festival, and that's what's helped to keep it strong. Yeah, well, we're delighted to be giving the world premiere for this today. Uh, we, we contacted Bob Chilcott some months back to ask if he'd be interested in, in writing this commission for us. We wanted to commission some new canticles because we wanted to commission something that was useful, which we hope will enter the repertoire. And he very kindly agreed to take that on. And it arrived a few weeks back. We had one sing through of it at our first rehearsal last May, months ago. And I think basically everybody's learnt it in the last week, amongst everything else they've had to do. And at 5.30, or shortly afterwards, we'll be doing a world premiere of it. Looking forward to that very much. It's wonderful to be able to look back over our history and for instance this year we're looking right back to the beginning with an opening service that has a period instrument orchestra with works by Purcell and Handel but and I think it's wonderful that the same day we'll then fast forward 150 years or so with a performance of the Dream of Gerontius and then the next day fast forward another 50 years or so and we have a performance of the Tarangalila Symphony just sound world that is completely unimaginable to, to our early festival pioneers.